Chapter 3 Water Resources Before I begin, what I intend to do is to give you a quick meaning of the term water resources. The most common sources of water include rivers, reservoirs, lakes and groundwater. The water that is drawn from these sources are useful to humans. They are useful in terms of agriculture, industrial, household, recreational and environmental activities. And the important point to remember is that all of these activities need fresh water. Ocean sea water is salty, hence that cannot be used. So we need only fresh water. Now that you are aware of the beginning, let's start with the chapter. It is a known fact that three-fourth of the Earth's surface is covered with water. But we have only a very small portion of fresh water. And a few seconds back, I have told you that almost all human activities require only fresh water. Now if we have small portion of fresh water, then countries and regions around the globe will suffer from water scarcity. That brings us to the topic water scarcity and the need for water conservation and management. Now the availability of water resources varies over space and time, mainly due to the variation in seasonal and annual precipitation. If there is not much rain, then the rivers will not have sufficient water and it's not going to be enough for a given population. Rain is something that is not in our hand, right? But what is in our hand is controlling the wastage of water. We can and we must control that. And that is where water management and conservation comes in. Water scarcity may be an outcome of large and growing population. And the reason behind that is, number one, growing population needs more water for domestic purpose. And number two, growing population also needs more food and to grow more food, water is required for agricultural need. Now I want you to understand this vicious cycle. Water is needed to meet the growing needs of growing population and that will lead to falling of groundwater level. Going forward, that will again affect food security. Keep this cycle in mind and you can write wonderful essays and answers in exam. Here is another great point that you can use for your essay. So after independence, India went through intensive industrialization and urbanization, which means a lot of industries and MNC came up. Of course, it provided a lot of employment and people's standard of living really improved. But on the downfall, there was a pressure on existing freshwater resources. Because to make all of these industries and MNCs function, you need a lot of water. And not to mention, you also need a lot of electricity, which was also produced from hydroelectric power. So as the population and lifestyle kept on increasing, water and energy requirements also kept on increasing. And you can also see that every house has its own groundwater pumping devices. I'm talking about the bore wells. So that gives every individual the liberty of drawing water whenever they want. And with excessive utilization and exploitation of water, groundwater is going to vanish. So I think this is a great point. If you can mention it in exam or in some essay, you will definitely get good marks. Let's move on to the next topic, multi-purpose river projects and integrated water resources management. So now the big question is, how do we conserve and manage water? And we have a solution to that as well. Even historically speaking, human beings used to make structures like dams, then reservoirs or lakes, then canals for irrigation. We still continue the tradition. It's just that we have some more sophisticated technology in terms of building a dam and, and river basin. Now quickly, let's read about what is the purpose of a dam. So dams were used to impound river, means stop the river and then accumulate some water from the river. Simultaneously, you can also accumulate rainwater and later on you can pipe it out for irrigation and other purposes. Now adding the similar purpose, today dams have a little bit different role. Now they are also used for electricity generation and sometimes they are also used for fish breeding. That is why today dams are referred to as multi-purpose projects. So some of the examples are Sutlaj Bees River Basin. So there you'll find Bhagranangal Dam. So this project is used for uh, both hydro power production as well as irrigation. Then we have Hirakud Dam on Mahanadi Basin in the state of Odisha. Their water is used for conservation as well as for flood control. To boost any country's economy, we need rapid industrialization and growth in the urban economy. And in industries, you'll have heavy machinery. And urban economy is nothing but shopping malls, private businesses, public properties like railways, metro and other facilities which consume large chunk of electricity. And for electricity, we need dam. So again, you understand the cycle, right? So just remember it this way. So the purpose of dam is to block the river and accumulate the water. Though it may have its positive role, it also has its fair share of negative role. So when you accumulate that much of water, what happens? 
all the sediments, the muddy particle that comes with the river, that also gets accumulated and settles down in the bottom. Now imagine a tank where you are storing water and at the bottom of the tank you see a lot of mud. Over the time you'll see small growth of vegetation and then when these vegetation decompose, they mix with the water and pollutes the water. So I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Another kind of problem that exists is whenever there is a proposal for creating a multi-purpose project like such huge dams, then you will have to clear the nearby surrounding, which means you also need to move the civilization. So that causes many social problems because when you displace local communities, they have a lot of things to lose. Local people have to leave their land and sometimes their livelihood. And once there is a dam, you will have plenty of water to supply for the irrigation. And because of that, many farmers have got into the habituation of using water intensive and commercial crops. So commercial crops are those crops which have a lot of market value. And these kind of crops takes a lot of water. So you have to keep the entire crop submerged. Now there is a problem to that as well, because that is going to cause salination of the soil, which means the nutrient part of the soil will be lost. So if you notice, this multi-million dollar dam did create conflict between people because there are people who wanted to use it in a different way and then there are people who wanted to use it in a beneficial way. And sometimes due to dams, there is a interstate dispute when it comes to sharing of water because dams are meant to block the river and when you block the river, the water doesn't reach the other end and there will be a dispute, right? So remember these points, they are very good for writing essays and answers in exam. And the next topic is rainwater harvesting. Now water harvesting system is a viable alternative, which means it's good both socioeconomically and environmentally. And over the time people have developed wide ranging techniques to harvest rainwater, groundwater, river water and flood water. For example, in the hilly and the mountainous region, people have built narrow diversion channels like the gullies because to supply the water for their agriculture. Now rooftop rainwater harvesting is a very common one. We all know about it and this is heavily practiced in the region of Rajasthan. So all the stored water from the roof goes down through a pipeline and saved into a pit which is underground like a sump and this water can be used later on during summer season. Now similarly in the regions of Bengal there, there causes a lot of flood plains and this is mainly because of the tributaries of Ganga. So what people have done is they have created small channels to irrigate and supply those water to their fields. So these are some great techniques used by people at different places. Just have a look at this picture. It describes about the bamboo drip irrigation system. Now we know that Meghalaya receives heavy rainfall during monsoon. So there the people with the help of bamboo pipes, they transport water, which is such an innovative technique. And this kind of technique is specially used in the hilly region where with the help of gravity, the water reaches down through these pipe channels and supplies continuous water to the village people. It's like a controlled natural piping system. This chapter was basically a quick look at the importance of water in our society, in our lives and in our future. And by seeing the level of water scarcity, the only organism that doesn't understand the importance of water is humans. And with this, we have come to an end of this chapter. I hope you have found this informative. If you enjoyed these videos and see a purpose behind watching them, please like the video and comment down below. Until then, catch you guys later and talk to you guys on the next one. Peace.